Revenge porn used by the deep state as part of the gang stalking protocol. Unlike my fellow targets of this extrajudicial program commonly called gang stalking, I can state with certainty the essence of the character assassination used against me as one part of these covert illegal operations and it is sexually oriented. This is patently obvious because of the verbal hit and runs, as I call them, that I hear and also record, which make up the vast bulk of triggers or sensitizers used on me. There are various strands to this medicine program which include being stalked and tracked by strangers, being subjected to deliberate noise campaigns and being harassed. And these harassments ranging from the irritating to the very, very disturbing. And I do believe harassment hardware or weapons have and are being trained on some or many targets. But as such devices can shoot their payload invisibly and perhaps silently through walls and other solid objects, one cannot prove this without committing a criminal offence or for someone to whistleblow. And that hasn't happened yet. Consequently, I will only deal with the provable. For this video, I will concentrate on the character assassination and why I believe our deeper state is responsible for the revenge porn setup, which of course will help stigmatize me and facilitate the other parts of this program. I don't believe that what has been maliciously put out there comprises of just a verbal smear. I'm 100% convinced something has been seen. But what's been used, who did the spreading of this visual virus, and ultimately who actually gave the green light or signed this off? Let's look at the possibilities of how the powers that be accomplished their goal of humiliating, ridiculing and destroying my life via this hugely intrusive privacy invasion made public or revenge born by the state. I'll begin with the least likely scenario. Technology is available which will make you look as though you said something that you never actually said. This software is available now. I'm thinking about my full-time employees and their ability to survive on $8 an hour in New York City. And foremost in all of our minds has been the loss and the grief felt by the people of Orlando. Most of us don't get our help. If you've seen anything of the recent film The Lion King, you'll know it is all computer generated. Now this is a very, very long shot, admittedly, but could technology have manufactured a facsimile of me and rather than portray me as the beautiful angelic creature that I undoubtedly am, instead turn me into a less than wholesome person and published that. The second and more plausible method to denigrate and destroy me by making public something that should never be made public is by stealthy use of a hidden camera or cameras. Cool, look at those beauties. I'd love to write each and every one of them. Michael, ignore them, you big, big boy. Take a look at my curves instead. Michael, this is weird. I'm off. I've mentioned this previously in relation to cameras on laptops that I've owned, which I've always covered with tape as soon as I got it. And I've no use for webcam, so that's why I covered them. And prior to owning the laptops, I had the bulky CRT monitors, which had no camera. And I've never owned any of the brands of TV that can listen to you and spy on you. So it begs the question of how was I spied on, or still am being spied on perhaps. What is exasperating is the people's silence, locally. I've delivered many, many hundreds of leaflets recently and over the last few years. 
those leaflets highlighting this extrajudicial program. It had links to sites, videos and people I believe to be genuine targets of this and asked them not to focus on me but to look at the wider picture of this program. And all I've been inundated with since delivering those leaflets is total silence. This inexplicable silence is quite chilling, I think. That people cannot see further than the ends of their noses and understand many good people here and around the world are being targeted by a panoply of various means to stealthily destroy their lives. They're fixating on me at the expense of everything else leads me to the worrying conclusion that I'm surrounded by a majority of fucking morons. And I mean that in the nicest possible way. I'll leave you with this short edited video from Jennifer Granick and her TED talk relating to Martin Luther King and how the FBI bugged his apartment or places that he was staying and tried to use that against him. The FBI sent a package of these recordings along with a handwritten note to Dr. King. And a draft of this note was found in FBI archives years later. And the letter said, You are no clergyman and you know it. King, like all frauds, your end is approaching. The letter even seemed to encourage Dr. King to commit suicide, saying, King, there is only one thing left for you to do. You know what it is. You better take it before your filthy, abnormal, fraudulent self is bared to the nation. But the important thing is, Dr. King was not abnormal. Every one of us has something that we want to hide from somebody. And even more important, J. Edgar Hoover wasn't abnormal either. <laughs> the history of surveillance abuses is not the history of one bad megalomaniacal man. Throughout